Hey guys, this is Dr. Bagley. Okay, so today I want to talk to you about the afterworld or afterlife dimensions. So today I want to talk to you about the afterlife. Okay, so I was teaching in a uh, church and we talked about the afterlife. That was a topic. And so today I want to give it to you in a lecture format so you guys can do your own research, so you guys can ask questions, give your comments, and so on and so on, okay? I'm not here representing any denomination, any religion. I'm here to give it to you in the context that out of 8 billion people in today's time and throughout life, there are, there are messengers, there are prophets, there are teachers, there is male and female positions there asian continent united you know africa and so on and so on. so you can't just dismiss all of the records that's out there under one denomination because that's just one is not fair and it's not true to the point and so especially when we talk about from start to finish in the and then once we die the after life not not necessarily what happens when you get there but from this body to that next dimension that judgment aspect um is there a judgment how is it going to be judged and so on and so on okay so let's start the lecture <laughs> okay in the beginning if i was a barbarian nothing going against the European nature and history. I'm talking about barbarian meaning I have no rules, regulations, I'm not civilized. Historically, barbarians were very civilized in their own nature. But if I'm just a barbarian in the context with no civilization, where would I go? Well. To be truthful, in today's time, where I would go first is uh, a Muslim position because they have extreme detail of structure um, in, in the civil position. Uh, they have it in the sense that everything they do, they apply it because they follow Allah, which is their language of saying God or the God. And so from a civil position, from banking to marriage to all of it, if you don't have a place to start, start there. Okay. If you are not in that position to start there, then the secondary in the context that they were before uh, um, uh, the Prophet Muhammad um, peace be upon him, is Judaism. Judaism, in the first five books of uh, you Christians, um, has a structure, but it's a different type of structure. The structure from Judaism is from the, the messenger, prophet Moses, rest, uh, peace be upon him, and, and him talking to God, the Lord, Allah, and getting the commandments, not just the 10, but also the 613. And that gives you a structure of civilization too. But from the point of view in Moses' position, uh, peace be upon him, it is from a slavery mentality position, okay? The, the Muslim position is from, I'm already in, a, a civilization, but I need to advance myself to a degree. And that's where I believe the Muslims play in part and Judaism's the first five books um, play that in part. But either way, pick one. <laughs> the point is they both serve God, Allah, the creator. Okay. So you have to start with that. Now, why do I say you have to start with that? and not in Buddhism or Hinduism or any of those things. Because Muslims and Judaism, they want you to live a life on this earth. And as you live, 
everything you do, you honor God, Allah. Buddhism and Hinduism, they're all about self enrichment, self uh, enlightenment. So if I want to focus on myself, that's fine. Go to Buddhism and figure out how to be enlightened self. But then once you finish with self, you have to come back into civilization and you have to live amongst the people. And that's where uh, Judaism and Muslim positions play in part and not necessarily uh, Buddhism and Hinduism. Okay. Once I get through that position, uh, Christ, so let me back up. Christianity is not a civilization building book. Jesus never given us the, the direction of how to build a civilization. Jesus gives us the direction of how to be spiritual, to help the people in the context of spirituality. Muslims and Judaism is structured, and God and Allah put that, the, the prophets, peace upon them both, the structure to have a civilized citizenship, if you will. Okay. Now, if you go between Muslims and Judaism, uh, preferably go through Judaism first and then fill in the blanks with Muslim, uh, you'll have a complete picture of God, Allah, um, and civilization. Then you have to ask the question, okay, how and what about me and the relations between me and God or me and Allah? Okay. Because it's complicated in this, or I would say complicated, it's structured in the sense that everything we do, we honor Allah, Allah or God, okay? And, and that's fine, but the question in today's lecture is, when I die and that next journey to that next dimension, let it, and so let's just bring it out, to that, to the darkness or the light or in limbo, Okay, so we're not going to, I'm not going to talk about when you get to the darkness or when you get to the light or when you get to the limbo, I'm talking about from the idea of where you're at now and you die and you're presented in a place, the light, the darkness or limbo, that journey. Are we judged? Does God judge us? And we'll, we'll, we'll address that in a second. Okay. So that's stage one. You have to be structured. You have to get structured in the sense of being civilized and how you are civilized. You have to give honor to God. And if you really want to focus on yourself and fix yourself, fix yourself, um, then, then do, um, uh, Buddhism and Hinduism and all of those that that will assist you in yogi that assist you in that position. Okay. After you go through that position, then then you'll get to a point of understanding that there are some commandments that Allah or God has given us to be civilized and how to live. Okay. When you get these commandments, you, in, in Judaism, it's the first is the 10, then it's the 613, and then when it comes to the Muslim, it is everything else about you <laughs> in every structure uh, of life, okay, is, is about serving and giving to Allah, okay. In the context now of this position, will if I serve Allah, the God, God, if I serve Allah and God in everything that I, and I do, will I go to the light or will I go to the dark or will I go to the limbo? And the correct answer to the question is, will I go to the light or the darkness will ultimately determine not how close you keep the commandments. 
and I know that's a shock to some of you, but follow me through this. If, if I was blessed to be rich and I give to the poor and I give to the poor because the commandments says for me to give to the poor, then no, I will not go into the light just because I kept the commandment. And this is really where we're at, uh, the starting point. Just because you keep the commandment doesn't mean you're going to make it to the afterlife. And so let's say we want to not be in the dark and be in the light. Okay. If we want to be in the light, it is not just doing the five prayers. It is not just living and doing right with my neighbor. It is not just don't kill, don't uh, commit adultery, don't do these things that call the commandments, the do's and don'ts, and definitely don't do these kind of things. It is not just those commandments. And what I mean by just, it is not the fact that you keep them is going to allow you when you die to go to the light. It is not. It's when you get to a point in your wanting to serve and wanting to please Allah or God. It is when you get to that point when you're not following them. Let me explain. If I had money and I'm helping the poor and I say in my mind or whatever that Allah or God says give, then it's not being held accountable as good. So I'm keeping the commandment but it's not being held accountable for good. What is in the same circumstance or uh, situation is uh, allergy, is if I see a poor person and I, out of my compassion for that poor person, go down and help that poor person. Irrelevant to the fact of what the commandments say, irrelevant to the fact of how I live, irrelevant to the circumstances that made them poor. If I have compassion for that person and I feel in my heart to help them because they just simply need help, that's counted for good. If I don't cheat on my wife because of the commandment says don't com com uh, cheat on my wife, that means nothing, okay? But if I don't cheat on my wife because no matter what she does, it is just in me to not do wrong and to love her as best as I could, that is counting. Okay, I'm just trying to make a distinction of understanding that just because you have the commandments, that don't mean too much. It's, it's a starting point. I'm not dismissing it. It's just, it means you're at that, that level here. You need to get to a, a higher level where you're not keeping the commandments and it's ingrained in your heart just simply to do. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see that it is in your heart of the compassion of the people. That's really where it needs to be. The compassion of the people and your act out of who you are in relations to who the strangers are or who, who are they. In that position, so let's simply say that uh, my stepmother just turned 70. And let's just simply say she is been serving uh, in her, her, she's a Christian. She's been serving God, uh, following Jesus for a long time. 
and she been harping on keeping the commandments and all of those good things. Okay. The fact that she's keeping the commandments is a good thing. And it's a good thing because it's a civilized thing to do when you're working amongst the people. But when it comes to God, when it comes to Allah, when it comes to the Creator, it is not necessarily at that level. It is the compassion that you have for the people in the civilized world that you live in. Okay? Okay. So that's stage, if you would give it a stage, that's stage two. Okay? From a barbarian, stage one, you have to find structure, you found structure, and now you're taking that structure and you embedding it and, and massaging it in your heart. Stage two. Okay. When you die, when that, when that time comes of your, you're getting ready to die. In, in all religions, there is this idea that there is a guardian angel or this angel, I forgot the name of that angel, but the angel of life and death. But there's an angel uh, that keeps record of everything you do. Everything you say, everything you do, everything you think. Okay. When that, when your life comes to that point and you're getting ready to die, it doesn't matter if you get into a car accident, if you commit suicide, or you just die of natural causes. When you get to that, that point of death, your life is going to flash before you. Okay. When your life flashes before you, according to karma, and let me pull it up real fast. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, so let me, let me give you the definition of karma. Okay. And the reason I want to give you the definition of karma is because after you finish stage two and you get the commandments and you get how to live to God or Allah, when you get to that level, your your next journey in life, if you have time, which a lot of us still have time, um, is to get it into your heart where it becomes a commandment into uh, Compassion, okay? From a commandment to compassion. Once you get it to a compassion level or not, and you get ready to die, okay? It doesn't matter if it is a car accident, suicide, or natural causes. It's irrelevant. No one wants you to commit suicide, but... Let's talk about it. Car accident, suicide, or natural causes. Your whole life is going to flash in front of you in an instant. Okay. So karma defines, uh, Hinduism defines karma as, uh, and I'll read this, which describes a system in which beneficial effects are derived from so the beneficial effects the the crossing over the the goodness or the badness or the limbo the beneficial effects are derived from the past beneficial beauty and harmful effects from past harmful actions meaning the good actions versus the bad actions that you have that you acted out uh, in your life. And I think in New Testament, it talks about what sin is. Sin is officially the act. Okay. Um, so it is then uh, act creating a system of actions and reactions throughout a soul reincarnated lives. Okay. So the reincarnation aspect of Hinduism, it, it talks about 
after you die, it is the system of collecting the data of your good and evil, bad, good and bad things. In a twinkling of an eye, you wake up and you're presented into the light, the darkness or limbo. Okay? Okay. So Hinduism is the closest thing that I found to explain the steps of judgment between death and the next world. And, and I confirm in the concept by life experiences of throughout the world of all those who died and came back to life, they all said, I'm either in the darkness, I'm in the light, or I was somewhere else in limbo. Okay. I'm not talking about what happens when they get there. I want to just explain when you die from this position to the next life. You're going to, your, your life is going to express itself of the goodness and the evilness, collecting it, and then delivering that action or energy, let's call that energy of good and evil over to its side. Very similar to the idea of Egyptian, the book of the dead and the heart being measured by the feather. Did you do good things versus the evil things? And is it, it will be judged. It's no different than every religion that pretty much says the same thing. You're not going into the light and going into the darkness because of A, B, and C. Okay. So the idea of death ultimately revolves around you. And it revolves around the actions that you do. And the actions that you do is a collective from the guardian angel, the angel who keeps the record, I forgot all their names, but keeps our records of what we say, what we think, what we uh, do. And it keeps record and that record is flashed in front of us and then that outcome called karma is expressed. Okay. So I say all of this just so I can help uh, everyone understand that life is, is so short. It, it is so short and time just doesn't stop. And you have one chance while you're in this body um, before you are then reincarnated in the context of into the light, the darkness, limbo, or if you're a Hindu believer that you're going to be coming back into uh, another body. The point is, the point is, and I, and I want to get people who's listening uh, for this to understand is this. And this is really where I was trying to express in the lecture earlier, and that is this. Life is not about society. You think you have free will. You, you don't. In society, you don't have free will. It's an obedience position. It's you do right, this is what's going to happen. You can continue living your life normal whatever normal is. If you go against that law, then you're going to get punished. In context, when you die, that position of breaking the law and, and being judged and being punished, that's not how it works. And the evidence of the fact is all the people around the world who died and came back all pretty much said the same. They pretty much mirrors what Hinduism talks about when it, when Hinduism talks about karma. When you die, that karma of yours, the energy of yours is going to be expressed. So to live 
as a Muslim or to live as a Judaism or, or to live as a Christian. It is good to live as a citizen amongst one another. All of us, some kind of way, have commandments and all of us should be enlightened within ourselves to be a better person, enlightenment, uh, within, within the citizen position and so on. So we're all living that. Now, living is just living. The question ultimately is, what do you have passion for? If you have passion for the money, then granted, you're going to have money, but then Christian writing says that rich people, it's very hard to get into heaven, the light, because you're only giving it because you got it. And, and, and if you're just doing good business, but your heart is not in it, then karma is being collected about you. And you can be a good Muslim and you can be a good Judaism or Jew and you can be a good Christian. But in actuality, when you pass away into that next dimension from this body to the next dimension. And we're just calling it karma the karma is going to be determining factor of where you go. So in other words, your works, your action is the work. The work is the action and the work of the action has to be compassion, not obedience. Because obedience is not Compassion. We live every day in this world as obedient citizens, keeping the speed limit and so on and so on, not cheating on a test and so on and so on. We, we don't like it. We want to speed. We want to go slow. We want to just do what we want to do. And that's, that's what we want to do. Okay, the question is, where, where are you being passionate when it comes to following God, serving Allah, doing the, the things that is being given to us to do. Because when we die, we're going to go from this body and we're going to go in somewhere else in a twinkle of an eye. And from this body to when we're conscious to where we're going to be in that next world, that distance of time, karma of our life, the good and the bad of our life is going to express itself. And when it does, you'll, you'll just be aware, like all the people in the world saying the same thing, I was just aware that I was in the darkness, that I was in the light, that I was in limbo, okay? So that is, uh, yeah, I think that's what I wanna give you today. And uh, like I said, this is not for everyone, but this is just for uh, the, the earlier lecture that I've given that you guys now have, that you can dissect and research and do your own thing. And we'll go from there. All right, guys, have a great one. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.